Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. And I uh, just got down here to Florida, and I thought that I would uh, just chime in real quick and say hello to everybody, and I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, you know what? I got a question the other day, and uh, I thought that the question was worth uh, repeating, or at least the answer was worth repeating. Not that I know the answer to all these questions, but I can give my opinion and my perspective based on, you know, talking to a lot of people, and I get to see what a lot of people are thinking. Um, I have, you know, gatherings with men and things like that, so I get to hear what men think and stuff like that. That. And uh, and I think one thing that um, is really interesting is when you talk about relationship advice, um, you know, this young lady who asked me, you know, what do you think are the things that, you know, that, what are the things that made you attracted to Dr. Alicia? You know, you guys know I'm engaged uh, to a pretty smart black lady, very smart black lady, actually, probably smarter than me. Uh, and um, and she's really cool. And, uh, you know, and, and, and that was the person I chose to marry, not not just somebody I wanted to date, but somebody I wanted to marry. And um, and I think that um, I, I, I decided I wanted to share this, not because I'm trying to be arrogant or tell you what to do. If you don't agree, that's totally fine. Uh, but I wanted to share it because I think a lot of people get bad advice. You know, I think that we don't listen to men enough in our society. I think that men get ignored. And and uh, instead, people end up like I, I think it's really weird when I see women reading relationship advice from other women when really you should be listening to men because men can tell you what they want. But I think also listening to men who can tell you how to get what you want is really important because, you know, there's a difference between a man liking a woman and a man loving a woman. There's a difference between a man wanting a woman versus a man wanting to commit to a woman. And I think that those differentiations are very important. And I can say maybe as a guy who made that conscious decision, you know, I've, I've, I've had some girlfriends and stuff like that. But, you know, in terms of like, what's the difference in terms of making that conscious decision to want to marry somebody as opposed to just, you know, hang out for a little while? I thought I would share that with you. So uh, Alicia and I were on the beach today and we thought and we were talking about this for a second. And I put some stuff on, on my Twitter. My Twitter is Dr. Boyce Watkins one Dr. Boyce Watkins number one if you want to hear it. And I thought that I would share with you a little bit of what happened during that conversation and give you a couple of deeper perspectives on it. This video won't take long, so it's very, very quick. Um, so here's my vote in terms of what I think um, at least, you know, gives a woman, you know, a fighting chance to capture a good man. Now, And I think that's really important to understand. And I'm not saying a good man in the sense that they're good and bad people, but, you know, good man meaning if, if your goal is, you know, a long-term commitment um, sometimes a man's ready to be a good man. Sometimes he's not ready to be a good man or a committed man, right? Sometimes he doesn't want to be a committed man. He wants to be something else. Uh, in a way, it's almost like with women, right? There's sometimes where a woman wants to be sexual and times where a woman has sex is the furthest thing from her mind, right? So it's, I think the same thing is true for marriage and relationships. Sometimes a man wants to be committed and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he wants to be something else, right? And it's not a matter of judging. It's a matter of kind of understanding and, and discerning. So I think really, and there's a whole nother conversation in terms and knowing whether he's even ready to be sort of committed. I, I think a lot of it has to do with negotiation in terms of being clear about what you're here for. You know, like if I tell you what I'm here for, like if, if you're selling me chicken and I say, look, I'm here for a burger, then you're going to say, oh, sorry, we don't sell burgers here. And then everything ends. But if I come in and I start eating chicken, hoping that one day you're going to give me a burger, I might be making a mistake because I'm not at a burger joint. I'm at KFC. You see what I mean? So a lot of times what we're offering um, is what we're offering. You know, what people are offering is something that you got to figure out, like what's on the menu, what's available here at this restaurant. You know, you're not going to get caviar at a restaurant that sells pizza. You see what I mean? So, so sometimes you may go into a situation where the guy who's not interested in any type of a serious long-term commitment, but you're looking for a commitment. So you're looking for caviar at a place that sells pizza. So it might be better to walk in the door and say, you know, I'm kind of looking for some good caviar. Uh, what you got? You know, and they say, oh, no, we got pizza here. Oh, OK, fine, fine, fine. Now, if somebody lies and pretends like they got caviar in the back, you know, and, and they're serving pizza up front, well, that's a whole nother conversation. We'll talk about that later. But um, here's a couple of things I want to lay out and just maybe this will help somebody. I just thought I would share that, you know, 
the universe told me to talk to you about this, so I'm sharing this. And if you're watching anywhere on social media, if you could hit the thumbs up button, share, or subscribe button, I'd really appreciate that. If you could do that right now, um, that would be awesome. So here's the first thing. One, um, I think knowing how to talk to a man is really important. Um, one of the things I like about, you know, I, I like about Alicia, and just generally I think this just really works well. Nobody really talks much about the importance of knowing how to talk to a man. Um, I remember being coached extensively by my father on how to talk to a woman. No, you don't talk to a woman like that. No, you can't say that to a woman. No, that's disrespectful. No, you can't. But I don't hear that as much on the other side, you know. And sometimes, you know, somebody who comes out and who's barking at a guy and throwing out disrespectful language, especially if you're dealing with a like a real man, an alpha male type guy, he's he, sometimes the disrespect that he feels can blind him to any sort of logical reaction to what you're saying. You might be telling the truth. You might be giving him good advice. You might be telling him what he needs to hear. But if you're saying it in a really disrespectful way, people ain't going to hear it. So I think knowing how to lead with love and knowing how to say things uh, in a way, like starting things off, like, look, sweetie, baby, or starting off with a compliment. Like, hey, you know, I really like the way. Thank you so much for doing this, for taking out the garbage. But one thing I want to ask you is this, da -da 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 -da, right? So um, that knowing how to talk to somebody, I think is really important. And if I were you, I would keep that in mind. Number two, um, hardworking, organized, and always on her stuff. You know, elevating your game. Like, I think... I think that, you know, like mature guys like women that help make them better, that that sort of are good teammates that, you know, whether you're talking about business or you're talking about, you know, anything related to um, trying to succeed in anything. Somebody who's kind of just on her shit is really, really good to have in terms of somebody that can help balance you and strengthen you and, you know, and everything else. I mean, a lot of corporations basically say like there. In fact, there are companies where. They decide if they're going to promote you based on your wife. If your wife is a crazy ragamuffin, they're not going to promote you because they're going to be like, okay, they, he's got this loose cannon next to him. We don't even want, we don't want him here. We don't want him playing for the Utah Jazz, or we don't want, you know, him, you know, in in our company, whatever, right? You know, so you know, so having somebody good by your side that helps elevate your game is really important. Encouraging you to do better, um, again, in a loving way, but in a beneficial way, where the person's actually putting in the work and helping you succeed. Um, I think a good teammate. Everybody wants a good teammate. Men and women. Men and women like this. I think three. Good with kids. Um, you know, you don't want a crazy person raising your kids. Your kids are part of you, right? And and uh, somebody who doesn't, for example, who doesn't respect the role of the father, or who thinks that they have the right to revoke your role as a father. Um, that's almost as to me. That's almost like a type of assault, like the way sexual assault. You're taking something from somebody. You're violating another person. I think that parental alienation is a, an extreme violation. Well, you know, when you know, how dare you just think that you have the right to decide if I get to be a parent. You know, like that's no nobody's it's nobody's right to take away your right to be a parent, right? Because that was given to you by God. You made that's your child, right? So I think um, just somebody who's good with kids, who um, understands either both in a relationship or in divorce, the importance of respecting the father, the importance of of you know of taking care of the kids, keeping the kids clean and smart and healthy and everything else. That's really awesome. You know, if if you have the mom that's that's disciplining the kids, educating the kids. Just making sure they're well taken care of. That's that's like a, a relief, like stress off your back. You know, um, I remember I had a friend one time who had a, a, a child with a lady that wasn't all, all the way put together. And his kids were going through it, you know. And, uh, and so I think that sort of getting some sense of how she was raised as well as how she raises, maybe she has kids, how she's raising her kids now. Those things matter. So good with kids is important. Number four would be nice to your mama. Um, mamas are important. I don't care. I mean, you know, it, it sucks if, if the mama's crazy. Now, if the mama's crazy, it's tough because the man has to make a decision, right? And you don't want to put a man in a situation where he's choosing between you and his mama. If that's the case, that's going to, your the girlfriend's going to usually lose that battle. Um, but, you know, I think if the mama, assuming the mama's a normal person for the most part, um, and, and she might, you know, have some alpha female authority because she is the grandma, right? So she might have a, you know, like, for example, I have a, a mother-in-law to be, and I defer to her because she's she was there before I was, and and but fortunately she um, makes it easy. It's not a, a tough situation. It's not like she's always, you know, sticking her nose in places where it doesn't belong, stuff like that. You know, so basically, I think the mama being nice to the mama, engaging with your mama is really important. So guys, I think you want a woman that's going to connect well with your mother, and ladies, you want to connect well with the mama. If you don't connect well with the mama, just kind of give up on it. Just 
say, okay, this might not be the guy for me. I think that's, that's the honest God truth. Number five is um, a woman that relaxes the man. Um, I think that this is important because a lot of people are under a lot of stress. A lot of black men are under a lot of pressure. And I think that if if a man's fighting all day long and then he comes home and got, he got to fight with you, it may not be your fault. Maybe you have a legitimate reason. Maybe you feel like fighting is the, is something is justified based on the situation. But here's the problem. The people don't want to be around people that they fighting with all the time. People don't want to be around people that are nagging them all the time. I don't care who you are. I don't care. Even if you're right, you might be right, but you're still a nag. You're still a wet blanket, you know. And the thing is, um, I think, I, I think that you know, relaxing the person, making them feel good when you're around, like finding things specifically like that you can do that will make the person feel good around you on a regular basis will make them come back to you. People come back to things that make them feel good. People avoid things that make them feel bad. It's really that basic. It's not that it's not compli complicated, right? So it's very simple. Uh, and the last piece, really important, especially if you're dealing with a real man, is respect. Um, you know, I, I just think, um, you know, I, most people get it, but some people don't get it, and they think that they can get into situations where if you're mad enough, they have the right to be disrespectful to another person. And I just don't think that works. I think respect. Is so important. Um, I know a lot of men who would rather be respected than even loved. They, they're like, yeah, you can love me second, but I need you to respect me first. If you love me and don't respect me, I'd rather. That's not as good as you respecting me but not loving me, right? You know. So I think respect is really important. I think if you can't respect somebody, you should just get away from them. Um, you know. So, um, so you know, pick somebody you can respect, and uh, and also pick somebody who's going to respect you. So that's my two cents. The boy's perspective. That's me going into Uncle Boy's mode. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Every now and then I do that because I see people that, that ask all kinds of questions and, and I do Q&As and, and uh, there a lot of people, a lot of folks are confused. A lot of people are getting bad advice. TV is giving you bad advice. Magazines are giving you bad advice. Your friends are giving you bad advice. And uh, and so I thought that as a guy who, you know, has discerned between, you know, women that, that maybe are not necessarily, cut, you know, somebody I'd want to marry versus someone where I said, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sign that contract because marriage is a legal contract. It is a, don't make no mistake about it. Marrying somebody is more involved than starting a business with somebody. You know, you really are connected at the hip in a legal and material way. And, uh, and marriage is a, a great way to build wealth. And it's also a great way to lose wealth, just like business. Business is a great way to build wealth, a great way to lose wealth. So don't think that your relationship choices don't link to your financial choices. They're, they're totally connected. It's very difficult to build massive amounts of wealth if you um, can't keep your relationships together. Like, you know, I hear about the rappers, you know, they have, you know, eight, nine babies, mamas or whatever. I'm not. I'm trying to figure out how they're actually going to build anything. You know, it's really, really difficult to do that when your stuff is kind of spread out everywhere. Building requires all the bricks to be on top of each other and organized and structured. If your bricks are spread out all over a field, you're not building anything. You, you've got what pretty much is chaos and destruction. So um, that's it. That's my two cents for today. I hope that this helps somebody. Um, we actually have a love and money program uh, in the Black Business School. If you want to take a look, um, I think the first month is free. You can go to theblackloveblueprint.com. That's the blueprint.com. We have a whole film series related to that. You can watch the whole film series for free. Uh, so uh, this is relationshipy stuff, and there's also love and money related stuff. My first book I actually wrote was called Financial Love Making. Actually, I'm sorry, it's my second book. My first book was Everything You Ever Want to Know About College. My first, one, my second one was called Financial Love Making, and I wrote it because I was really fascinated with how love and money kind of overlap with each other. So uh, anyway, I hope this helps you, and I hope you have a great day. And I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins, and uh, I will see you soon. Hit the thumbs up button before you go. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co-sign for three, what did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are.